All right, you guys, this is episode 18 of Inner Demons. I'm gonna just jump straight into it. It's 1991, I'm 21 years old, I'm in Susanville, and I just walked you guys through um, a situation where my my career almost got sabotaged. Um, you know, this is an incident that I've often thought back on over the years. I reflected back on it, and I thought about the what ifs, um, the maybes, what might have been different. And, and the reason is, is because this situation right here really did have the potential to change everything. And I do mean everything. Um, you know, you guys got to keep in mind that when, when this occurred, I was 21 years old. I was just a young guppy, man. Um, I, I obviously, I wasn't an NF member. I was barely an established NR member. Um, so it's not like... You know, I would end up leaving Susanville and I'd go to the Bay and I'd bring um, some history with me. I didn't have none of that. I was just another somebody from San Francisco, boxer from Frisco. That's it. Um, you know, th this is what this is what would have happened straight up. I'm, I'm going to give you guys um, a scenario of what could have happened and what might have happened. So I get this information from Joel. Obviously, I let my celly wino know what's up, um, and then I go out to the yard, and uh, let's just say, for argument's sake, or for, for uh, you know, to help you guys understand what could what could have happened, let's just say I take off on Jasper and Chino, I take flight on both these cats, right? I get off on them. Um, Obviously, the administration is not going to let me go back out to the yard. So they're going to put me on walk alone. The homies right there in Susanville, without question, they're going to deem me no good for putting my hands on the OA, for getting off on the homies. But I, I wouldn't have been worried about that. They, they already had me in a situation where um, my status was in question. So I'm not wor really worried about the homies putting me on um, the BNL, the bad news list, or the, the hit list right there in Susanville because obviously I'm already on it if they're going to hit me. So, you know, what, what, what? at that time, what I was relying on was, you know what, I'll just go out there and handle my business. When I get up to the bay, I'm going to report it, um, explain what happened, and hope I get clear. That's what I was hoping for. That's where my mind was at at that time when all this was going on. Anyway, so... So I go out there and I get off on Jasper and Chino. They put me on walk alone. Uh, boom, I'm gonna stay like that until the homie's gonna excommunicate me. I'm gonna be on, uh, they're gonna shut me down. And I'm gonna stay like that until I get a ticket out of Susanville going to my next destination. So let's just say I go to, let's just say I go to the Bay. I go to Pelican Bay. Whoop, they shoot me a ticket, bus ticket to the Bay. I catch a bus ride up to the bay. Now, everything that happens literally is going to have an effect or is going to have an impact on the determination of my status. I'm talking about everything all the way down to what block I land in, who's there, what pod I land in, and most importantly of all, who oversees the investigation. Let's just say I land in C facility, right? So I land in C facility and um, I land in a pod. Hopefully there's, there. let's just say there was a C in that pod. So, you know, after they run their NA stuff on me, you know what I mean, uh, who I am, all my vitals and all that stuff. I'm Obviously they're gonna wanna know a little bit of history where I came from. So. Came from Susanville, and then I'm going to report everything that happened. Um, before I get into that, let me just say this, too. You know, let me just back up and, and explain this this um, short little part right here. Because this, this was important when um, the reason why I put so much faith and I believed what Joel had told me about when the homies supposedly had a... a a green light on me. The reason, the reason why I put so much um, confidence in what he told me is because back in the late '80s, early '90s, establishing the main lines meant something to the NF and the NR back in those days. That's when the cause was still the cause. 
We were we were fighting for the main lines. We were at that time we were right in the middle of the throat, right in the in the throes of, of of trying to establish as many main lines as we could so that homeboys so that Northanios could go and do their time without being taxed, without being um extorted or 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 uh you know without being assaulted like some of the bonds say um so that home so that you know Northanios could go and do their time without the threat of interference from the opposition that's what it was about back in those days so when they told me that you know this was the thing i was the oa out there on the yard um all the hermanos well we we all made a collective decision, but I stamped it because I was the OA. So we made a decision to take flight on the opposition at that time. Shout out to all the Southsiders. You guys already know how I roll, man. This is just a story from the past. I'm even wearing blue just to show you guys uh, what, what time it is, man. <laughs> no, but seriously. Uh, you know, so... Being that I was the OA, if anybody was going to be held accountable, it would have been me for not delegating one or two hermanos to stay back. Because the whole thing was, you got to remember, the whole thing was he said that, that these homies put a green light on me because basically I gave up the yard. I gave up the yard in the sense of I didn't leave one or two hermanos out there, or I should have stayed back myself. Because being that there was hermanos out there on the yard, that yard that, that yard was considered an established NR or an NF uh, established yard. Now that there was no hermanos out there, it wasn't considered established. We weren't out there no more. We, you know, obviously more more bros, more hermanos would, would come on other buses, but at that time, it would, that's why it was believable. You know what I mean? So in, in, in that sense, um, when he told me, hey, you know, the, the, these guys are saying that you gave up the yard and that's why they're, they're green lighting you. That's why I believed it, you know what I mean? Because that's what we were doing back in those days. We were trying to establish these main lines. We were fighting for, uh, um, you know, equality out there on on the main line so that homies could have everything else that all the other group segments out there had. Um, all the privileges and the things that make prison more bearable. Um, that's what it was all about back in those days. So that's why I put so much emphasis and so much belief in what he told me. Anyway, so let me get back to what I was telling you guys. Now, now this is this is... This is the thing about politics, man, that's fucked up, but it's one of the realities. So I get up there to Pelican Bay and like I said, in a hypothetical, in a hypothetical, I drop a report on everything that happened. Now, depending on this, this NF member, how he thinks, um, how, you know, his, his, his personal perspective on, on the way he views things, his philosophy, his ideology, all that comes into play, um, and, it, and it's on an individual basis. And let me explain that because, look, you could have two NF members. They've both been indoctrinated. They've both been schooled the same way. They've both been exposed to the same level of NF um, schooling. However, as individuals, they have a difference in perspective how they view things, their own personal perspectives, um, they come into play and, and they're significant because let's just say, for example, one of them is a hardliner. He's He might look at that report <clears throat> and he might say, you know what? I don't give a fuck what was going on out there. Nothing justifies him going out there and putting his fucking hands on the OA, on, on Jasper and Chino, period. I don't give a fuck about it. nothing else. He should have, if he got that that heads up or that, uh, you know, that um, that message from Joel and Dopey about them supposedly, allegedly moving on him, then he should have went out to the yard and he should have he addressed it 
He should have addressed Jasper and Chino personally, and he should have tried to, you know, put his fillers out there and, and see what's up. And me personally, again, I still think that, you know, I don't agree with it, but you'll have hardliners that think like that. And then you might have another NF member, the other one that, like I said, has been schooled the same way, um, has been exposed to the same NF schooling. But again, his personal perspective, the way he views things, his take on things, he might, you know, he's he's an approachable type of uh, C, somebody that, um, you know, looks at everything from all angles and evaluates everything. He might look at it and say, you know what? Hey, this brother did what he was supposed to do. These guys gave him a heads up. They were about to hit him. It was a bad call. So how can I fault him for protecting himself? I mean, what do you expect for the homie to go out there and, and um, you know, allow himself to be a human pincushion? No, nah, man, it don't work like that. Fuck, I would have done the same thing. So, you know, like I said, man, it's fucked up, but that's how politics work, man. Um, so it, it would strongly depend on where I land and, and who I landed around and who got a hold of the the investigation that would determine my my uh you know my status my standings from that point on and like I said man it's it's fucked up that that's how it works but that's how it works you know what I mean uh, it shouldn't it shouldn't be who who is in charge of the investigation that determines the outcome. It should be the same across the board, but it's just not like that. It's, not, you know, there's there's one 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 NF member that sees nothing but he just sees black and white, and there's you know the other guy on 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 the other hand, you know he evaluates things. He looks at things. He he uh, he evaluates it from all angles, man, and um, you know he has a, a broader perspective. You just get hard line C's that are um, that make decisions, brash decisions, man, and that's why there's so many homeboys that are on the other side. You know what I mean? Um, that's why there's so many homeboys in bad standings, not just NF members, but also hermanos, um, Northanios. Um, just as Northerners, as Northanios, a, a lot of times some of the schooling, some of the ways that these guys are indoctrinated, it turns them into hardliners, extremists, straight up. Um, so a lot of the times, man, you get cats that are in positions and they make bad leaders, man. And that's the reality of it. That's another topic to talk about another time, but that's, um, that's why I say that, you know, this situation really had the potential to change the course of my life, you know what I mean? What what, what could have happened? What might have happened? Um, had they hit me, um, obviously I would have been in bad standings. What direction would my life have went in? Would I have came back to prison, catch it uh, because I caught a case on my own by my own doings? Um, would I have stopped living that life because you know I was in bad standings and maybe a uh, prospered and went off into another direction and maybe been may possibly being uh made something happen in the real world i don't know man um maybe i would have maybe i would have became an nf member anyway maybe i would have got cleared i don't know but so yeah man uh that's that's why i've, I've thought back on it um over the years because it really did have the potential to to um you know, throw my life in a whole different direction. You know, and the other thing I thought about is what Joel, what Joel and Dopey's from San Jose, what their what their uh, what their motives were for telling me something like that. They concocted this fucking story, um, and the, and the whole purpose for it was to sabotage my my uh, you know my status to bring me down with them because. They would end up locking it up um, right after that. Right after that situation happened, everything kind of came to light. You know, when I went out there, that I believe I covered this, but when I went out to the yard that, that day that I was supposed to get off on Jasper and Joel, 
and Joel short stopped me. Um, I didn't say nothing on that yard, but I was I was still man. My once my adrenaline came back down, and uh, you know I was the, the, I stopped seeing red. Um, I didn't say nothing to him on the yard that day. But I was just like, man, I was fuming the whole yard. I was fucking, I was, I was mad, man. You know what I mean? Uh, I was looking at these cats, just looking at them like these motherfuckers are plotting to hit, you know, plotting to hit me. You know, for what? What the fuck did I do? I did everything I was supposed to do out there. There's no way I was going to stay back on that yard while the other hermanos went out and, and, and got off, man. There's no way I couldn't see myself doing something like that. And and delegating somebody to stay back, man, everybody wanted to go. You know what I mean? Not because uh the Sureños got real thick out there. We were already we we're already used to being the minority. So it had nothing to do with that. It was it was the things that started transpiring out there on the yard, the scare tactic. Um it was it was the power plays um, in the in the things that were happening out there that discouraged um, some of the hermanos and like I said, man, uh, you know there was a lot of a lot of internal strife, a lot of infighting that had taken place out there on the yard amongst the hermanos. I told you guys in one of the prior episodes that uh, there were two hermanos that actually pulled knives on each other out on the yard. And I physically got in between them and uh, told them both to take a walk. I broke it up, man, before it escalated. But that's that's how it was out there. Motherfuckers were like, man, fuck this yard. You know what I mean? They were already discouraged. Um, everybody wanted to get the fuck up out of there. Susanville. Uh, I thought Susanville was cool. You know what I mean? And if I, if I could go back right now and do it all over again, I personally don't think... <clears throat> that it was necessary for us to get off the way we did. We didn't have to um, at that time. I think, like I said, I think the main reason why it happened is because of the scare tactics and all that stuff that that, that they were, um, that was happening out there on the yard. That's the main reason in the internal conflict. Nothing was happening in Susan. It was a dead ass yard. I personally think though that, um, the threat level wasn't any greater than it was prior to them opening up the gym and, and making that bit a big ass dorm like they did. That's kind of after everything kind of escalated to the other homies, to the other NR members that were there. When they did that, when they opened up the gym and they put in bunks and they triple stacked them motherfuckers and then they just started, they started bringing in buses from Chino, straight from Chino. Like bus after bus, we were getting the list, man, and it was like, damn, they ain't they ain't running no fucking northern buses up here from uh, from Queen. All these buses that are scheduled were coming from down south, back to back to back, and uh, like I said, man, um, you know, prior to this incident, there was um, you know, there was nothing happening in Susanville. There, there was nobody there. Like I told you guys, man. Uh, you know, you might have, you had some individuals that had done time. Uh, some of them were second termers, but they were nobodies. You know what I mean? Um, the caliber of of not just Sureño, but anybody out there was they were low level caliber um, individuals, first termers or guys that were just they were flim flam as nobodies, fly by nights. Um, but then when they started bringing in, in these buses, man, they started bringing in a different caliber of Sureño. Um, and, and these buses were packed with them, man. Uh, but it was, a, they were, a lot of these guys were second and third termers and they carried themselves different. They moved different. And um, right after that, you've seen a change on the yard. You've seen a change in the way that they functioned out there. Everything from how they operated on the yard just out throughout the day to how they operated in the buildings. It was it was obvious, man, that they had some guys there with some leadership ability that were trying to um, tighten up that ship, man. And they did, you know. Um, so, I don't know, Susanville was crazy, man, but um, 
you know, I wanted to hit Joel so fucking bad because I, I, eventually when they ended up locking it up, that's when I was like, well, fuck it. I might as well tell the homies now what happened. Or I might as well confront them. So as soon as, soon as uh, I want to say it was the next yard. You know, let me say this about Joel, though. Um, when I think about his motivation or his motives, I don't know. I never had any personal issue with him. The only thing I can think of is that if you guys think back to one of the prior episodes, I talked about an incident that that happened on the yard with Joel and my homeboy Joe Curligan from, from San Francisco. Joe Curligan was a knucklehead. He was an older cat. He ended up getting his brains blown out um, after he ended up paroling. Anyway, that's just... I wasn't surprised because that's what Joe, he robbed motherfuckers out there on the streets. He was a loose cannon. Um, he used to rob a lot of paisas in, in, in the mission and just fucking still be in your face. And like, it caught up to him. But he was a loose cannon. He was a knucklehead. I had to keep a tight leash on that fool. When, as soon as he got there, I already knew, man, fuck, I'm gonna have to watch this cat. Cause I knew, I knew him from the streets. We used to run around, but He's the one that had a, an issue with Joel. And, um, you know, I got nothing but love to the homies from San Jose. But Sa the homies from San Jose that were on the yard were straight set tripping. And it w wasn't even really the homies. It was the hermanos. There was a couple of them there. Because when that situation kicked off between Joel and my homeboy Joe... It happened while I was at work. At that time, I was working in the kitchen. I was stranded in there. They lock you in the kitchen. You basically work in there all day until the afternoon. So this all happened. It, st it kicked off in the morning. And they'd already been bumping heads for like the last week. They had been bumping heads in the cell. And it just steadily continued to escalate. I didn't know it got that bad. But that morning that everything happened, it escalated fast real fast and once my once my boy Joe um uh, once he got going um that was it man you know what I mean I can I can imagine how how it happened but Joel went and cried to the you know to the homies to the other hermanos that were from San Jose and they pieced him up they gave him a pedazo and told him hey go hit that fool you know what I'm saying if he threatens you um, if you feel threatened or if he comes at you, go ahead and blast his ass, man. And, um, you know, had I had I not been stuck inside the kitchen, I would have been able to defuse that situation. And Joe was a Nortenio, and he was an older dude, and I had nothing but love for him. But, you know, I, I even, if he wouldn't have got right, if I couldn't have defused it, I would have at the, you know, the extreme, in the extreme situation, I would have, I would have even went along with having him hit. But that's like if he wouldn't have listened to me, if he was just like, you know, I fuck that, bro. You know what I'm saying? This motherfucker, you know what I mean? I'm going to smash him and, you know, I don't want to hear it. Then even I would have, maybe I would have hit him myself. I'd rather, I would have rather have done that than, than see another homeboy hit him. I know that might sound crazy. Some of you might be like, what the fuck are you saying, man? But straight up, um, I'd rather do it myself um, than to see somebody else do it. But anyway, um, you know, like I said, I, I, I think I could have diffused it. But they, instead of the homies trying to, uh, you know, s stop it, instead of them trying to get it, Joe, and, you know... There was a couple hermanos from San Jose that I, that I know that I'm thinking about particularly right now. Sleepy being one, he was older, been around, um, and he, you know, Sleepy could have got at him. He could have talked to him. And Joe was a knucklehead, but he would have listened to him because he respected the NR. He knew I was part of the NR, and you know he would have respected that just based on. Just based on that alone, he would have respected Sleepy's, uh, you know, his position, period. But it is what it is, man. But, you know, that 
would Joel want to sabotage my status because he had an issue with Joe? It don't make sense, but that's the only fucking thing I can think of. Why else would um would Joel and Dopey con I didn't really know Dopey, but why would they concoct some some uh story like that and want to see me uh sabotage? So I can't call, you know, what reasoning or what motive Dopey or, or Joel would have wanted to sabotage my status. I don't know. I, I didn't know Dopey. He was on the one yard. Um, he was already in the oil when I got there. I'd never been around him, so I didn't know him personally. So why would you, why would you want to sabotage another homeboy um, status like that? Why would, why would you want to see another homie fail? Um, if you're on your way out, get the fuck on. But I don't, I don't understand why they try to take me with them, man. Um, yeah, so, you know, that was one of one of many incidents that would end up happening in Susanville. Um, after that incident happened right there, I ended up staying in, in the oil for another 17 months. Um, why not... Me and Wino stayed sailed up until he ended up catching a bus. So anyway, after this incident, um, after this happened, I'd end up staying in Susanville in the oil almost two years. Um, within that two years, man, I ended up catching a couple stabbings, um, and then they integrated the yard. I'm going to get into all that. Um, if not next episode, the following episode after that. But the one thing I want to touch on that, 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 happens a lot in prison is this right here man um you know how when 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 i first came in the oil i told you guys how joel reached out and he shot me that message and i was communicating through the window and then i turned to my celly and i told him why no i told him what time it was and what the basically what the message was saying and you know why knows his take and Wino was older than me at that time. I mean, this motherfucker had a whole full head of gray hair. He'd been around for a while. He'd done, he done time before. But he was willing, he was willing to ride with me. Um, in light of the fact that that would have put him in bad standings. If, you know, I, I wouldn't have told Wino to stand down he was willing to go out there and get off on Jasper and Chino with me. Not because he wanted to he wanted to uh be in bad standings, you know, but there was a level of loyalty there because he knew I was a solid homie and he knew that that was a bad call. That's why, man. And a lot of times, man, when you get homeboys that sell up with each other, they don't necessarily even have to be from the same hood or have a whole lot of history together. They just they, they develop a bond because, you know, real recognizes real, man. And when you get around a good dude, a good homeboy, and, and you bond with them, and then something like that happens where, you, when something like that happens, when a homeboy catches wind that the homies are gonna move on them, or somebody gives them a heads up, however, however he gets that information, when, when something like that happens, a lot of the times, man, um, that individual Selly will end up riding with them straight up, man. Um, a lot of times when the homies will get at somebody to get on their Selly, they'll, they'll step back because that bond is stronger. I've seen it happen a lot, man. Um, matter of fact, it happened to my... Uh, the guy that I refer to as my criminal mentor. Me and, uh, I was talking about him. Me and Jerry was talking about him one time. Um, talking about Sleepy John Romero. And uh, basically, him and another another NF member were selled up. And I'm not, I don't remember if it was the other NF member that got the green light on him or if Sleepy got the green light on him. But however it happened, one of them was green lighted and the other one said, you know what, man, fuck that. I'm gonna rock with you, man. I'm not I'm not gonna move on you. You know what I'm saying? This shit's bullshit. It's a bad call. 
So fuck it, let's go blast, uh, let's go blast leadership. And that's what they did. Um, that's what they did. So, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy, but it happens a lot. But, you know, I, even though I was a first termer and, uh, I still was learning about, you know, that lifestyle in prison and the politics and the unwritten rules and all that. And I had enough sense of mind about loyalty to know or to, you know, to tell, basically to tell, uh, why not to step down, to, to stand down that I didn't want to see him fall in bad standings on, on account of a situation that I ended up getting myself in or a situation that didn't really concern him. So I had to tell him, look, bro, this is, this is in our business. Um, you just got to stand, you know, stay out of this one, bro. You know what I mean? Um, you know, I feel the same way if it was him to have to go out to the yard and have to see him get off with two or three dudes. Um, I wouldn't want to see it, but at the same time, like I told him, man, it's in our business. It doesn't concern you. It's something that I'm I'm confident that I'll get it straightened out. But you wouldn't be able to get it straightened out for assisting me, um, and I don't want to see that happen to you. But anyway, um, you know that's something that happens with a lot of a lot of times. It happens with. A lot of times with guys that are sold up together, man, one will, I mean, that loyalty is, uh, it's strong, man, it's strong. You know, the, the, the other thing I want to say before I close this one up, I know it's a short one, but um, it's been a minute since I got an episode out, and uh, well, I'll address that in a minute, but the other thing I want to say is this, you know, but even though I was a first-termer, um, I knew I knew right from wrong, you know what I'm saying? I, I I knew the basics, I knew enough about, you know, the ins and outs of of, uh, of our politics to know that this was a bad call and you know, I was loyal. I was loyal to the NR. I was loyal to the North Day, period. This is all I had. It was all I knew uh, uh, as a as a kid. You know what I mean? And I'm telling you, man, the two weeks that led up, well, it was about 10 days before I got cleared to the yard. Uh, but from the time Joel told me about that little story that they concocted up, I was stressed the fuck out. I was, I, that was probably one of the worst times of my life, man. Um, that, that 10 days, um, I just in the cell, I was fucking bum kicked, man. You know what I mean? Uh, all I kept thinking about was, what the fuck was I gonna do? How 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 things were gonna be from that point on if I wasn't good with the homies? Like that's that's all I knew in life, at, especially at that age. Man, I was young. Um, I was still I was still fascinated, and I still I was I glorified that lifestyle, everything about it. And here I was getting ready to go out and do something that was gonna that was gonna ruin my status. That was gonna, basically, was gonna end my career. Um, you know, but I still, I wasn't about to just go out there and allow somebody to put their hands on me. You know, even though I had nothing but love for the homies and for, for you know, the that movement that I had committed myself to, I wasn't gonna allow myself to just get hit there's no way I was just gonna go for that, you know. Anyway, um, this is episode 18 of Inner Demons. I know it's been a while since um, I released the episode. There was a lot of stuff that has been going on for this last month. Everything is finally behind me. I had a project that I was dealing with that uh, that took a lot of my free time, man. I had to devote a lot of attention to this pro project. It's over now. Um, so now I have time to get back on, not just inner demons, but just YouTube period. I've kind of let things fall wayside the last two months. So I'm gonna be going hard, man. Sandman's, uh, he's finally done with, with the things that he had to take care of, man. So, you know, I'm already trying to release his, trying to get as much content done as fast as I can to get back ahead of the game, man. So, um, 
you know, we're still here, man. Nothing's changed. I haven't lost uh, interest in YouTube or nothing like that. Unfortunately, sometimes there's other things that go on outside of YouTube that uh, require um, attention. And that's basically what's happened these last two months. But everything has been cleared. Um, and now I'm just I'm focused back on getting back to where we were before all this shit happened. Before I got sick and before all this other stuff happened. So, um, like I said, everything's cleared off my plate now, man. So, anyway, this is episode 18 of Inner Demons. I'll be back with episode 19 either tomorrow or the following day. I'm out.